forward. Okay. All right, so today we're going to be looking at some properties of limits. We uh, yesterday talked about what limits are and how to understand limits versus continuity and how they kind of interplay together and what the definition was of a limit. So remember how that worked. What was continuity? It was bridge in equals the road, which then in turn equals the road out or the bridge out. So as long as all three are equal, they're, they're continuous. What if bridge in equals bridge out? What if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right? Then there is a limit. Does the limit itself make it continuous? No, there, you would actually have to be able to say that it's the same as that functional value. So what's gonna happen today is we're gonna start breaking down some of the pieces of properties of those limits and I need to share my screen with you guys so you can see what I am seeing here. Sometimes I have to kind of go back and forth. There's an awful lot of things to watch for, but hopefully can you guys see that now? Okay. So this is one of the reasons I hand you the uh, notes in the format and normally write all these things down. But what you'll see in this first one is if someone has the limit of some composite function. You guys remember doing composites last year? So in other words, if you were doing the limit of something like e to the x plus a cosine of x, it wouldn't matter if you did the limit of the cosine as one story and just get that answer do the limit on e to the x, get that answer, and then the answer is just whatever you got from both of those put together. You do not have to do them as one big bite. You can do them in individual little pieces. Similarly, you see right here how if you have the limit as x of k times f, notice what we did with that k. See how it popped in front? So if someone was saying, for example, the limit as x approaches four of three x squared, that would be identical to the limit as x approaches four of x squared, but then what can I do with that three? That allows it to just sort of pop in front. Similarly, if we wanted to say, what was the limit as x approaches uh, negative one of like this one, let's do something like 4x e to the x, then what I could do is I could break it up as two pieces. And just do it in little bite-sized chunks. So if there's a product, I can do each limit independently and then multiply those two answers together afterwards I'm not gonna waste your time by literally writing examples of each, but what does this one say? Same thing, if you have a rational equation, you could do the top limit, you could do the bottom limit, and then divide the two answers together and that would be fine. Um, notice this one, the limit of an exponent, just take the limit and then take the exponent. You see how that works? There's some nice little things that you can do. And, um, in the composite right here, that the limit of x goes to c of g is l, then the limit of f of g of x would also be the same, okay? So moving on to how this actually plays out. So we're just gonna kind of play this out and, and understand that it may look like I'm doing more work than I literally need to do, but I wanna get you used to just utilizing the definition and how that plays out. So my first thing that I'm gonna write is that the limit as x goes to three of f of x, but what do you think I should do with the two? See that two right there? What can I do? That, that property on the front page says, what can I do with that two? I can just bring it out in front and say, I don't care about it. Same way I could say minus four times the limit as x goes to three of g of x. At this point in time then, this piece right here and this piece right here, what do we know about those two pieces? Well, up here in the given information, the limit as x goes to three of f is eight. So I can remove that little piece of information and substitute eight in. 
And in the same way, the limit as I go to three for G is negative two. And so I've got 16 and eight, which of course makes 24, which is not a big deal. All right, let's see this next one and see if you guys can help me figure out the next one. This is gonna be the limit as X goes to three. Okay, let's be really, really, really cautious here. What should I put in front? Let's be really careful about what I should put in front. Look at it carefully. That exponent. Now it says we're gonna take the limit of g of x, right? But the property says I'm squaring g of x. So rather than squaring it and then take the limit, what can I do? I can take the limit and then square it. And I already established right over here that this limit was equal to negative two, didn't I? The limit as x goes to three was negative two. And so I think we just got 16. All right. So this one's a little obnoxious, isn't it? Hmm. Oh boy. So it looks to me as like I've got this limit of f of x. So rather than taking the cube root and then taking the limit, I'm going to take the limit and I'm going to take it to the one third power. What about g? What am I going to do with that g that's sitting down there? See, for the moment, I'm doing some work that makes the problem look a little harder, isn't it? Because I'm applying all of these properties from the front side of that story. Hmm. Over here, we could pull that four in front. And this is kind of strange. And I know that this is gonna bother some of you because what am I taking the limit of right here is, it's not the function, what is it? It's just x plus seven. So we talked about how the limit is getting close to something but not touching it and I told you that we just encourage you to say, screw it, I'm gonna go ahead and touch it anyway and see sort of what happens. So what is this value right here? Careful, go back to the top. This value of this limit is, eight, but it's being cube rooted, so it's gonna be two. How about this one? That one was negative two. See, this one right here was um, four of these H guys, but the limit is as X goes to three on H was given to be zero. And how about this part? Now, I know we don't technically need to do it because it's zero over something, but what is that limit right here? Remember I said, don't touch your sister, and you're like, poke anyway, I'm gonna do it. What happens if you plug in three, what do you get? 10, it's no big deal, you just do it. In fact, I always just do it, and the only time I back away from it, it's like, oops, I got burned by that. So let me go be a little bit more careful, let's see if it factors, let's see if it's a removable discontinuity or something like that. So all of that work to get an answer of negative one, and we're out, okay? Pretty simple concept, isn't it? that we can break that up. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing from this graph. And so what I'm gonna do is do one or two of those and then you try the other ones and then we'll talk about how you did, okay? So this first one, what's the first thing you think I should do here? Can I move the two in front? And in this case, is it a two or is it a four? Just a two, that parentheses didn't hit it, did it? Okay, so we got that two. So then we got the limit as x goes to zero. By the way, is it a pain in the butt to write limit as x goes to zero? The writing limit, 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 limit. Yes, it is, sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to Cal. Okay, we won't do these forever. But then instead of taking the square of the function and then taking the limit, this is, let's take the limit and then square it. 
and then now you you guys know my penmanship and when I do a lot of limit problems eventually I just write an L with a squiggle because I do it so many times it's almost like a signature because you get into that habit so what is this one so f is up here as f gets close to zero now keep in mind it's not saying that y is getting close it's like as the x component of the function gets close to zero what is this graph getting close to two it is so there we go and then up here what would happen on the g graph as i get close to zero What is happening to this graph around the neighborhood around x equals zero looks to me like zero, no big deal. So what is our overall answer? It appears to be two times four plus zero, so it looks to me like eight. Now, what kind of messes with people a little bit, This I'll do this one, I'm gonna let you guys try these last couple, is we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this and we're going to do this okay so the fact that these are referring to f and g up here and this is referring to some third function just the function x squared no big deal we're just going to go ahead and take it a bite-sized pieces so guys what is the limit of this first chunk right there This is supposed to be easy. As I get really close to negative three, what does x squared get close to? Nine. Easy peasy. Just plug it in. It's easy. Don't make it harder than it is. How about g, though? As I get close to negative three, what do you guys see? It's one, because g appears to simply be a nice horizontal line that goes forever in that direction. And then how about, oh dear, f of x as I get close to negative three? Well, this is a place where we're gonna have to actually do a little bit of thinking because when I come over to here, it appears to me it looks like it has a slope of negative one, doesn't it? So if this is the value negative one, negative two, this would be negative three. So it appears that that value would be negative one. So sometimes you will have to interpret the graph. Could they have asked what happens at negative eight? Could we figure out what there would be? Just by continuing that on for a little further, we could, but it appears that's gonna be negative one for this total answer. So what I'd like you to do is keep on going a little bit, see if you can go through those, go to the front page and Look through those identities if you need to and see if you can kind of go through those problems. This.
it is kind of an interesting one. C is a tricker, isn't it? So if you follow the rule, it says the limit of the composite, it says take that limit of the interior function. If you go back to those rules, you take the limit of that interior function. Of, and if you look at the inside guy F, the limit as you go to negative three on F, which is this guy, we have found it before was negative one. And so the rule says, once you find that answer, notice I change the story on the limit. You see it? Yes. Hold on, say it one more time. The limit as x goes to negative one on g, does it say g of negative one? No, it says the limit. So as I try to approach negative one from either side, and the two people are coming along the bridge in and the bridge out, are they coming together and meeting someplace in the middle? Yeah, so it actually is the limit. It's not g of negative one. It's literally the limit as you approach that g. That's super duper tricky. So this is kind of, and I did that one in red because that's the one that I think would really kind of jack with people a lot. I think the rest of these are a little bit more straightforward, okay? These a little jacked up because that is g of f of x. So the rule said do the limit of the interior function I got one. And therefore I'm supposed to change the story to the limit as x goes to the one of the exterior function. And as I try to get close to one over here, I got negative one. That is really a strange little set of arguments. I'm going to question number six, which is the composition rule. So I took the limit of the inside guy, which I got one, and then it says take the limit as x goes to that answer on the outer function. If that bothers you, welcome to the world. It bothers me too, it's okay. That I'm not gonna die on. I think the rest of these are pretty good, but do you notice they did something on E? 
it's one only from the left side. So as G approaches one from the left side, what do you get? It looks like it's just coming down here on negative one, isn't it? Yeah, that's not bad. So we've got, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. it was F. As F approaches negative one from this side, it was one. And as G approaches one from the left, it was negative one squared. So I think that should be pretty good. And over here, the limit is X goes to negative one plus one. Did I mess something up? Did I mess something up? Isn't there a square on that? This one? F. One minus, oh, I'm a dummy. Not A, I did, I looked at negative one, didn't I? Okay, the limit as X goes to one from the left side should have been two, shouldn't it? And so that's gonna be four. And then over here, I think this one should be fairly straightforward. So what should we do on this one? Is I think we're gonna do the limit as X goes to negative one from the positive side of five, which is sort of trivial. And then we're going to do the limit of all of this stuff on the inside, but we're gonna take the square root of all of those limits. And I'm gonna run out of room, I can't write that small. But we're gonna go inside and we're gonna find all these limits and then we're gonna square that ultimate result, square root that ultimate result. So I don't have enough room to write all of that down, so I do know that this answer is five, right? As X gets really close to negative one, five remains five. What happens is we get really close to negative one here. What does that get close to? As X gets really close to negative one, I think X squared gets really close to one. And then how about this? What happens as X gets close to negative one on F? As X gets close to negative one on F, but from the high side, it's two. So what's gonna go in this little bracket right here? Three plus two, which of course is, so it looks like my answer would be five minus root five. And that's just kind of giving us a feel for how that plays out. Now, the last little thing that we have right here is kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna do a pretty significant lecture on this idea called the squeeze theorem later on. There are some times where we actually cannot study a function itself. The most famous version of that that we're gonna look at is this guy right here. So you don't need, please don't write this down yet because we're gonna look at it. This is the most famous version of that. Now, what does the sine of x look like? Do you guys remember what sine x looks like? You got this thing, right? Now, can I divide it by x? That's gonna be kind of weird. So it's gonna take one side and as it goes out to the side, it's gonna waver less and less and less because it's gonna divide by a bigger and bigger number and make that amplitude come down, wouldn't it? On the other side, same thing, but it's gonna flip it over. But don't we have a vertical asymptote in there? Something kind of weird happens at zero, but is it an asymptote or, or, or what is it? I mean, you'd probably think that there's a line in there, but this is a really complicated thing. And so what happens later on in the course is we're gonna be able to establish that there are two functions, f and g, and f is always underneath that function, and g is always greater than function, and where does that put this? Smack dab in the middle, and if I could show that this limit was, call it k, this one gets really close to k, and this one gets close to k, what would happen? If this one is stuck between k and k, what does it itself have to be? it would have to be that same value k because you're just stuck right in the middle of it. And so we're gonna learn what that is. So as we work through those, that's kind of a, an important little thing that is called the squeeze theorem. Um, and so um, in this particular story, 
G right here is always in here. So what would happen if I took the limit of this is I would be able to say that the limit as X goes to negative one of negative three X would be, ah, somebody has joined us. Let me admit Amber here. And so have we ever done something like this where you have a problem and you throw something. Oh, did I mess up? I did. Dag nabbit. I'm going to blame Amber. Sorry, Amber. I'm going to blame you. I heard something and then I forgot and I wrote something wrong. Okay, this is supposed to be G in the middle, isn't it? So we're going to throw G right here in the middle. So that's kind of a significant thing that you can do is if you have an inequality that is true all the time, then you can distribute an, a, a, like a limit and actually process that limit throughout the story. So what is this limit right here? Very simple little idea. Oh, I know why they're coming in late. They don't know our schedule. <laughs> what is this one? Three. What is this limit over here? If you got really, really close to negative one, it'd be negative one squared, which is one, negative one, which is, well, negative one, and three, that's three. So what would that tell you must be true is if g of x is stuck between three and three, then what would that pretty clearly mean? I think it's gonna be three, isn't it? So do we know anything about g directly? No, we just know that it's stuck in the middle somehow, and so we can conclude by what they call the squeeze theorem that the limit as x goes to negative 1 of g of x would in fact be the number 3. So that's kind of an important thing. Sometimes it's like, you used to call that indirect measurement. You guys have seen that before, right? You guys know how they actually measure planets. They can't go get it, right? They see how something goes in front of it and they see the shift of the light and they get this indirect measurement by saying how something interacts with something else, therefore we know what the, that other object was, right? And this is kind of one of those things. So that's a little teeny bit about the properties of logs. I hope you could find that that was quite a lot easier than what we did the other day, much, much shorter. And so you're just gonna practice with some of those skills. Probably the only one of which that was tough was which one? Was there any one of those skills that was actually probably the tougher of them? Hmm, any guesses? Which one seemed to be the one that if you're gonna make a boo-boo, which one would it be? Composition's kind of a booger, isn't it? So you gotta really, really watch because that composition says Right in here, the limit as you go to the composite is the limit as you go to the answer of the exterior function. That's kind of a like a weird little mind twist for us. So that's one you'll want to practice a little bit. And that's going to end it. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of work on that. And I think that should be pretty easy. And that's it. And then I gave you the list up on the board of what I'd like you to have done with by when. Monday, and make sure at least one of those assignments is turned in online. Uh, Amber and uh, Gian, I will talk to you guys in one moment, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys that work. Uh, I have my mask on right now, so. I think this should be easy peasy stuff, okay? All right. So my apologies, but try to get used to, even though you can look at the answer and write it down, try to show the notation and get the habit of being able to write in the program. Um, Raj, I gave five so that you guys can all get it, okay? So let me know if you need help because I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time. We have until 10.03, right? So we got eight minutes left. So get a few things done. Let me know if you have questions. Okay, so Amber um, and Gian, um, one sec. Um, one thing that is gonna be weird is Wednesdays are strange. We have minimum days, so we actually started earlier today. Yeah. And you probably didn't know it because you're just not here. You're gonna need to get a, a copy of the schedule. 
Um, but I did video it when you guys didn't show up. I videoed the whole thing. So I will post 